Hello everyone, Gerard Scarpese here, co-founder of the Hairbrain Community, and it is my true pleasure to bring you one of my hairdressing mentors, long hair legend, hairdressing icon, my fairy godmother, <laughs> Sharon Blaine. Hi, how are you? Hi everyone, how are you doing today? It's so hot here in LA, huh? It is super hot, but and it's about to get even hotter. I know. Sharon's going to share some fabulous, fabulous big hair, inspired by the runways, and uh, she's doing it with a beautiful pivot point mannequin, you know. And the pivot point stand. And the pivot point tripod. We are uh, in our 10th, I think it's number 10, is that right, Courtney? That's correct. This is our 10th edition of the Professionals Who Practice series, where even legendary icons with over 50 years in the industry still practice using pivot point mannequins. Absolutely, I love these mannequins. Can't live without them. I Anything else is just not good enough. That's the truth. All right, let's get into the hair. We know right. that's what you guys are here for. So let's look, check this it is going to take a little bit of work. So I decided I would pre pre do what I call my directional ponytail. So when I call when I think of directional ponytail, what I mean by that is before we actually place the ponytail into its position, I directionally blow dry the roots in the direction the hair is flowing to get a nice flat ponytail placement. Now just please sort of don't judge me, she's come out of a suitcase and I've just tried to sort of resurrect her a little bit, but she was done beautifully before she left Australia, but these girls in suitcases, they do bounce around a little bit. I'm just that currently now what I'm doing is, um, before, I, before I finish this off and get it clean, um, I also set the hair with some rather large hot rollers, so I would expect I'd put about four hot rollers in the pony and through the front, I set three hot rollers. My first roller placement was off base. My middle placement was a little bit half off base. And my first placement was actually on base. So what I mean by that is this first one was put in at this angle. My next one came back at about 75. And this one was very little elevation at all. That way then I can have height and move it flat as I'm looking to achieve. So let's move that out of the way. Now I've got this a nice little brush and just flip it out of the way out of, because I've got a lot of work going on here and I don't want to have too many dramas with everything getting in the way. So I'll just take a large big curl and we'll hold that. Now I've been pretty inspired about what's been going on on the runway and there's been some amazing, amazing pictures gone viral in the last week. And I hope you may recognize my little ode to one of them. One being the most stunning green, pastel green, um, Grecian inspired chignon that was done by Guido, I think it was. It was definitely Guido. I think it was yeah. for, was it the Margiela? No, no, it was done for no, Dolce, Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah. And it was so spectacular and everybody went crazy over it. So I thought I'd show you how I would achieve that. Obviously I haven't got all the bills and whistles that he had in it, but I can give you definitely the base of that. So first off, I need to clean up. So when I clean up, I'll take my product, and this is just a medium hold spray, and I'll come through and just try and get all those little flyaways nice and clean, because they are absolute nuisance, and if you don't get rid of them at this stage, they'll be there to haunt you as you move through the styling process. So all the way around the head, I come with that, and really get them lovely and close and clean. I could ideally just go through and spray, but I feel this is a little bit more targeted. And the other thing that I like about this technique is I'm not overdosing the hair with spray either. It's a little bit softer and a little bit more natural. So Sharon, we've got people watching from all over the world. Guys, I'm Gerard Scarpacy, the co-founder of Hairbrain, and I'm here for your questions to uh, get some more knowledge from Sharon. So if any questions about styling or the tools that she uses. I also want to give a shout out to Tracy Sakasitz, who's watching from Washington, D.C., and the whole Sassoon family. We're here in the Sassoon Academy, and they've hosted us for this Pivot Point edition with Sharon Blaine. Which I think I covered fantastic. everything there. Yeah. And you've got some exciting things going on over oh, the next couple days. Yes, yeah. well I'm, uh, let me just explain yeah, quickly please. and I'm gonna explain everything else as we move on as well. So I'm using this padding base. Um, I actually have these online, so I'm just giving me a free plug now. So if you go to SharonBlaine.com or Straight Pin Studio also has some of these. And this is the oblong shape that I'm using. And I find this shape really, really spectacular for building big foundations. Now, for, in saying that, I've taken three of them and put them together. So they're actually pinned through the edges all the way along. And that's what I'm now going to use 
to start building up my shape. So that's how I eventually start going with things. I'm a little bit sort of losing things on my chalk. You know, this is the thing with these wonderful long hairdressers. They have so many implements. When I, I show up, I have a scissor and a comb, sometimes a razor, two clips. I come with like six a bags. Load. We had an I SUV, know. and she's like, thank God you have an SUV. 25 mannequins, talk about a professional who practices. Sharon was up last night in her hotel preparing mannequins because she's got a big night tonight here where she'll be working with the Sassoon Academy team. And then tomorrow she's gonna to be on a two day long HB Live Academy broadcast. So over 10 hours of incredible education with Sharon in our hands-on academy broadcast to you. If you're interested in learning more about that, go to hblive.me and find out about this unique opportunity. Yeah, Padding, tell us about padding. Okay, doesn't this look crazy? I actually practiced a little bit and just a little test before I got started here today just to see how much I needed to build the shape with. So it's not uh, for the faint heart of this shape, it's obviously as, as large as I can get it and I probably would have been even a little more adventurous had I had the length of the hair to create it. So it's all about whether the hair will cover. So the first thing I did was take that piece of padding and bent it in half so I got the centre of the hair. And then I took a bobby pin on either side of the band. So when I take my bobby pins, I'm coming in right in close to the elastic, finding the scalp. So I'm coming in at 90, but I'm flipping down at the same time to lock that right in. So what, that do, what I'm doing there is basically going in under the layers of hair. So that locks it nicely into shape. Now this one sort of just slipped out a little on me underneath. So I'll come back through here and take it into the scalp and flip it back. So I really want to get this nice and firm to hold. Now, Can I'm we really talk about that for a second, Sharon? Because as you know, I've tried many times to learn how to use hairpins and grips. Oh, I know. And you I've, do and try, I've failed don't terribly, you? but I, I would love a refresher. You want that a little yeah. higher? A little higher? Um, no, I'm probably okay now. What I'm reading, I'm trying to find the mirror to actually look at the shape that I'm creating. Because at this stage, I need to say what I'm doing side on. I want to be able to see my profile. And if I can't see what I'm doing, I can't see the shape that I'm creating. So I'm seeing now as I pull this up here, this is actually looking quite nice. So I'm building sort of out this and way and then this will come back down here. But I still actually think I'm falling short ever so slightly. So I may even be a little bit more adventurous and find another little baby just to go in underneath because it's all about the shape for this look. So again, we're here with Sharon Blaine. You can see she's constructing a base using hair padding. She put in a ponytail, and then obviously she's gonna to start to drape and design hair over this to make a very, very large hairstyle inspired right from the one runways. I think it was the past week or so, uh, Dolce & Gabbana done by another genius, uh, uh, was Guido. Guido, yeah. I, he's doing some remarkable, amazing work, and it's so inspirational, and I'm loving the fact that the runway is actually doing some beautiful dressed hair at the moment. I think it's been a little sort of more sort of deconstructed that we've, we've been watching for sure. a bit. A ponytail or just yeah, a little Yeah, or just wave. a little sort of ballet barn. And yeah. it was just lovely and refreshing. And I'm sure he was very proud of the response that he got from the industry for that amazing creation that he made because it's just refreshing to see that old school techniques. Someone's reminding me, Sharon, of uh, the time I took your five-day boot camp oh, I know. and then I went on stage and actually dressed hair for the first time so uh, I, I'm a hair cutter I've been a hair cutter for almost 30 years I started right here with Vidal Sassoon uh, and about 25 years in about five years ago I decided to learn how to dress hair and I went straight to Sharon that's why I call her my fairy godmother I took a boot camp class with her and Brown Amir remembers that I actually got on stage in front of people and styled hair one time but at least they did it right Sharon? Well you know what you were pretty um, determined in that class if I recall. I'm always determined. Frustrated yeah. and determined yeah. I would say all in one. Yeah. Now I need to look at this baby and make sure she's balanced on both sides so I'll push her around and really get the shape. Now what I did do, and I didn't uh, uh, draw your attention to it, I took this funny little shape, which is actually what I call a crescent, but it just filled in that hole at the bottom. Otherwise, if I didn't have that um, filled in there, I would have like a gap right underneath. So, so that's are these like, are they made from like synthetic fiber? Yeah, and it's, it's all like synthetic, with like a, a, a hairnet? It's textured synthetic, and it's in a very, very strong hairnet. Um, I love them. I know a lot of people sort of do other crazy things, but these are perfect shapes 
they just work beautifully and and you know yes it, that you have to pay for them but the reality is it's it's what you get it's your outcome is what you're looking for so always working with the mirror when you're working with shape it's so important um, and it's also because this is very much a symmetrical shape it's balanced equally on both sides it's what's what's happening in around the crown we've got to be mindful of making sure that it has the right shape leading up. If I actually had some rulers, I would be measuring up through the top. So let's use my comb here as an example. So if I take this, oh, I do have some rulers. Fantastic. Surprise, surprise, oh, Sharon. Oh my God, I never you leave are, home without my Considering rulers. that Sharon is, came here with about six trunks from Australia, all of them bigger than her, she did have her rulers in one of those trunks. So talk to us about so the ruler. So the ruler I always like to have sit on the head and then it angles up. And then I sit it on the head and I angle up. Now to be honest, if I want these to re if I want to make this really spectacular, what's missing in the middle of the rulers in the gap in here could be another piece of hair another piece of padding mm -hmm. that and that would enough? really bring it up mm -hmm. but one thing I need to keep I know in my mind's eye that this will not reach yeah, all not the way enough. down so there's get the extensions I know yeah. so I've done a shape like this for a bride once and I tell you it was massive and we also put extensions in the hair to try and make that happen as well Sharon, you've got love coming in from all over the world. Some names that you'll recognize, Nicole Bellows, who oh, uh, Nicole, worked actually yes, with me in Nicole. class at the time when you trained. Uh, our great friend Steve Statland is out there. Um, Frank Mussolino, Hannah Ruth Evans is so excited to take your class tomorrow. For those of you that are asking about education with Sharon, first off, she's all over the world like nobody I've ever met before. She told me today, I'm having a hard time dealing with jet lag. I'm like, maybe you shouldn't go from Australia to Peru to California and back to Germany. Uh, but how's the jet lag doing? You managing? Oh, uh, it's tough. It's, it's tough. really tough. But if you are interested in taking a class, you can go to Sharon Blaine Education. That's her website. If you want to do it right away, for the next two days, we'll have an online class. Over 10 hours of live education with Sharon Blaine. And all you have to do is sign up at hblive.me. Just getting a bit higher. A little bit higher. There we go. Oh. $99 if you pre-order now, and you'll get our 10 most sought-after looks. And today, Sharon is working with our favorite tools which are Pivot Point Mannequin and our Pivot Point Tripod. And thank you to Pivot Point for continuing to support us in this Professionals Who Practice series. Now, this is coming together, so talk to us about that So, magic. you know what, I reckon if I'm lucky, I might get it covered. And that's, oh dear, I'm having a day of dropping. Do you think that's to do with the jet lag? It must be. <laughs> Last night, I was still sort of talking to myself about one o'clock in the morning, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is ridiculous. I've got such a massive day on tomorrow. I need to stop and sleep. Now, you notice how I don't work with a lot of hairspray. I know a lot of people love spray, but I really am a fan of just trying to get the shape beautiful, get everything working, and I find the more I spray, the more I basically complete and finish. So that's not what this is all about. We've got to get this to look beautiful. And I don't want to sort of finish it off with, you know, spray and then have to come back in and start fighting the hair. So it's really important for me not to go crazy with the spray. In preference, I would like to use more like an oil shine spray, something like that that will give me just a little bit of polish, a little bit of stick and grip without it sort of that really strong hold that I would normally get. So People are already yeah, blown away, Sharon. They're already like they're looking like, amazing. How's it yeah. looking? You know, I even kind of like those frayed pieces. Well, you know on. what, you, you may end up with yeah. those because I don't know where they're gonna go. Uh, they will go, they will go. So we just got to sort of tilt so it now. So Branamir is asking about which uh, which mannequins you practice on this specifically. This is my favorite ma mannequin, and this is the one we've requested for the online um, because I just feel it's all well and good to be using one length long hair mannequins, which are absolutely great to use. But there's a reality there, and that's not like what everybody has in the marketplace. You know, I like to be working on what would be more like likely to be our clients so this is the nadine increase yeah from pivot point. absolutely and if those of you that are interested this nadine increase is available on pivotpointshop.com we also have some pivot point mannequins now that are great for cutting available at hairbrain pro so when we do our hair our cutting classes 
Check those out. And for the styling class, get the Nadine increase. And we hope you guys can join us online tomorrow. We've got 10 looks coming together over the next two days from Sharon Blaine. Visit hblive.me to check it out. So look, there's such a random couple of hairs under here. All I've done is take all the hair from the middle onto the right hand side and just direct it under the padding edge and scoop it across till we get right to the opposite side. So that's how I'm just sort of working that through. Just, just get it all the way through. And whatever those little ends are, that's what I'm going to move. So I'm just going to work once again, just with a little bit of the oil shine. It'll just keep me able to manipulate that hair, quieten down any of the flyaways. It's got some grips and, and long hair pins for you, make I've it a little a easier. Assistant. Yeah. Thank you. So let's drop to the other side. In terms of product, lots of people are asking what sprays are you using? What do you prefer? Look, I work with all the companies out there and every company has amazing products. I think it's finding finding what you like. But, you know, I, today I'm working with um, some of the Goldwell products today. Um, I guess I've worked with them a long time and I just find it's just my go-to if, um, you know, and I already have them in my pack anyhow, so that's how I roll with that. How are we going there? Is that looking like it's going to tuck under okay? It looks amazing, Sharon. You yeah. have magical hands there. Well, they're old hands that have been working hard, haven't they? So I'm going to take this bobby pin. Do I need to pull you Yeah, let's come back this way just to get... I get a bit yeah. carried away, don't I? Yeah, I noticed you, you kind I of dragged them out. Yeah, you, did. you and, and Nadine are having a uh, salsa. Know, we're actually sort of getting into this sort of uh, Greek goddess sort of look going on here. So I'll move it down a little bit more. Just so, so much love coming in from all over the world. You've got lots of people watching you, about a thousand people per second are tuning in now, Sharon. Frank Mussolino, our great friend, says hello. Uh, Rizo says gorgeous shine line. Uh, Nicole Bellows, Bellows agrees that that's her favorite mannequin. All right, so some questions here. How I, I remember working with you, and one of the things that I picked up a lot was to use like long hairpins yeah. as you're designing and not overdo it with the bobby pins or the yeah. grips. So Can we talk you know about what? that? Today Let's have I a look at the difference today, here. Today, well. believe it or not, I would have immediately reached for that. These ones. The long hair pins. But this hair coming over this massive shape is very thin. There's not a lot of length. There's not a lot that needs to be controlled. Mm. It was more about me trying to get the, um, the distribution even around the head. Mm. So I probably did a little bit of a shortcut, to be honest. Yeah, because I remember you putting lots and it know. was one of the things I took away and you said, you know, this way you can design it and mold it and shape it. But because what I'm trying to do is get enough hair to cover the entire padding. The hair that would maybe sit there normally is maybe too short. Right. So I've got to sort of just flex it around a little bit so I can get that um, a little bit better direction, a little bit cover this padding shape. So to put the pins in, yes, I absolutely still do it and I live by that rule. But today I've just broken it because of the shortness of the layers and the size, the size of the actual padding itself. I just had to try and improvise to cover it up. So for everyone that's joining us, we're getting so many viewers coming in every second. I'm Gerard Scarpacy, co-founder of the Hairbrain community. I'm here with my dear friend and mentor, Sharon Blaine. She's taught me everything I know about long hair. I don't know if she, I don't know if she wants to take the credit for that though. Well, how much have I taught you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we spent a week together. It was a boot camp, and I've watched your videos many, many times. I learned how to use the tongs and the irons, which has been so valuable for me. Even as a hair cutter, I never used to really create texture with different irons until I took Sharon's class. And now I think I've gotten pretty good at it. These beautiful chignons, well, that, guys, that takes a lot of work and practice. Um, Sharon worked here with hair padding to build the base. Now she dragged the hair over, and she's starting to shape it in. And I'm going to let her pick up for you. Just wanted to let you know that we are here at the Sassoon Academy. I want to thank the team here for hosting us. Sharon's going to be doing a, an exclusive master class for the teachers here, which I know she's really excited about. And then over the next two days, she's going to be doing 10 hours of live online instruction for Hairbrain. Visit hblive.me to check that out. Let's get back to this technique. And then you're going to throw me on the plane on Saturday and, and I'm going to be exhausted, yeah. huh? <laughs> So I've sort of down to the last little random pieces of hair. 
And uh, Gerard, you know how we unpacked all that uh, gear today? Yes, I do. All six cases, all yeah, bigger than yeah. you. And you know the scarves that we took off the dolls here? Yes, there. yes. There's like an old lady's hairnet. Uh, not this one, this is... Yeah, no, there's another like that, but it's more a triangular shape. Okay, I'll look for it. I would like that. And then that would be, uh, more than that, yep. And what I would do with that is cover the whole head and we'll dry this into it. Maybe so I'll there's just, a brown yeah. one there. I'm going to bring the whole bag oh over Oh my God, in. all the tricks. We've got a bag full of, bag of hair nets mitts. all the way from Australia. This is my. This is what I'm wanting. Perfect. Yeah, the traditional hair. Yeah. Net, the tra yeah. So what I find is because we're working with such short little layers through the back. Say for instance here, you know, there's really nothing. It's just laying on there. It's not going anywhere. It won't go anywhere. That's where it's stopping. Um, what I'd like to do is spray the head and use the net and dry the spray in. And when I put the net on it, it'll actually hold it all into place. Right. So when I lift it off. It will be beautiful. I remember when taking Sharon's boot camp class, like working with, with fine, really fine hair nets to create amazing shapes in the hair. Putting the hair in these fine, invisible hair nets, and that's some of the way you do some of that beautiful avant garde. Yeah, work that you teach. yeah. Do you know, like everything I teach all really does go back to my original way of learning. Um, obviously, being a hairdresser for such a long time, I've been lucky enough to be in many eras. And I think I've taken some, I know I've taken some very key um, knowledge from every era, which I still hold true today. You know, I, there's still the things that I do from, and I can remember, oh, I learned that when I was doing beehives in the 60s yeah. and this sort of craziness. It's and that truth of, that you learn all these things and everything comes back and you integrate it. And absolutely, move absolutely. You know, I was referring to the fact that, you know, we're so hooked up on braids at the moment and everybody's so into braids. But I remember going to a, a class in, um, in, um, called Moulton Brown in London in and it was over 40 years ago and I went there to learn braiding 40 years ago so if people think and it's we were talking about braiding mm -hmm. and we've learned a lot about braiding because we're going to do some braiding in our um, online class yeah and a lot of you were and asking that doing that, some research on that it was amazing how far it all went back wasn't yeah, it yeah if you're interested, the class is called Waves, Braids, and, Bl and Brides. So yeah. Sharon's going to show the foundations of creating waves, some of the most important braids, and then pull a lot of these things together for bridal hair. It's a two-day, 10-hour class. You, you, after you watch it live, or even if you choose not to watch it live, you'll have lifetime access to the videos. Pre-register now for only $99, and you can train with Sharon forever, for a lifetime. You can go back and watch those videos over and fun. over again. Good on you, Gerard. Yeah. We're having fun here today. Yeah, we're working. We're always working. We're Sharon working is hard. one of the hardest working hairdressers in the world. Question? Sometimes I think, does, do other people sit up at one o'clock in the morning doing mannequin heads? When I was doing the prep for the two-day class, I, was, I started them all at home because I knew my time frame here was going to be really limited. And it was just amazing. I kept thinking, am I the only crazy person sitting up in the world tonight doing all of this? I would say yes, but I would also say no. You are a very <laughs> special crazy person because I've never, in all my years as an educator and all the educators I've worked with, I've never seen anyone as passionate or is excited to share as Sharon. So if you are an educator and you want to be inspired, take a class with Sharon, either online or in person. You'll see what it means to be doing the craft for 55 years and still love it. But yes, there are a lot of us who practice and using these incredible mannequins allows us to do it at 1 a.m. in a hotel room. You get a crazy idea and you just try it. And that's how we come up with some of this stuff. All right, it looks like you're moving on to the front. Yeah, so what I'm doing is I've just divided out. And when I do my, um when I do my uh, any sort of teasing, I'm always going to do like a little zigzag tease line. That way that um, each section will connect a little bit better. And I'm because I've got the angle that I set it at was virtually at this angle, that's the angle that I hold it when I do my teasing. Will you need pins and grips for this? I'm going to need some long ones today, long hair, long, pins. Okay. Long hair pins. And now I'll take my very front section 
And it's significant that you're, uh, this is a pivot point um, session, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I on s always refer to pivot point as probably the, the one, er the one um, company of education that I probably identify most with um, from their dressing of hair and their, you know, their resources have been instrumental well, to the I, success I of what I've done. When I think about past. Pivot Point, I think about a company that didn't pigeonhole itself in one way of doing things. Like they do cutting, color, styling, heat styling, and they've created these mannequins and tools to help with that. And uh, of course, founded by a legendary hairdresser, Leo Passage. And we're in the home of another legendary hairdresser. We're at the Sassoon Academy in Santa Monica. Uh, Sharon's been prepping here all day because she's going to work with the teachers. Imagine the honor of working with some of the best educators in the world to share her vision of, of hairdressing. So tonight she'll be here working with the Sassoon Academy staff. So we've got it all. We've got some Pivot Point, we've got Sharon, we've got Sassoon, and hey, I'm even here. And what's what's up? What I think sort of more exciting for me is a hairdresser that's been hairdressing for such a long time. And what I most probably feel so proud of that if anyone ever asks me who inspired me and you know where has there been someone in the past that's inspired you a lot, I'm going to always say um, Vidal Sassoon. Uh, for many, many years I always travelled from Australia to London to learn cutting. Um, but then when I think about dressing hair, I'm always going to think of Leo Passage. So mm -hmm. it's pretty unique for me today to have this privilege to be sitting here, well, standing here, doing what I'm doing, um, and, you know, having these incredible uh, points of reference for me today. So see what I've done there, guys? I've taken those long pins just on either side. Watch me poke it in there. See, that's the piece that come back. I need to direct it into the point to a narrower point around the ponytail base. So by doing that, I use these long pins and that's gonna sort of bring it in and pull it in a little bit tighter for me. So I'll take another pin through here and that way I can start working my shape around the hairline. So I wanna keep this nice and clean. This is what I would term the classic of all classics. And classic um, hairdressing to me is this clean, polished work. I think it's the one thing I do really love the most. And I was beyond excited to see this come through this week on Instagram because I felt the art of classics was not being identified as much lately. I just wanted to quickly give everyone, because you know what, with Sharon, what happens is things come together so quickly and beautifully that sometimes you kind of miss it. Did and you? I just turned around for a second. Oh my God. And, and, turned, and I turned my head back and I was like, wait, what? When what? did she come out? Did you see, did everyone see that? <laughs> well, the good news is I can go back and watch it on this video but at any time. did everybody else see it I or think did they I just did. jump the gun? No, it was me. I was looking at my phone. I know. I was then excited just... because my mom is watching. Oh, hi mom. My mom's your biggest fan. <laughs> hey mom. So Sharon's look at what here. I've got here. I've got just a small elastic band and two bobby pins. Okay, now to put a bobby pin in there, I'm going to have a major problem because it's going to show and I don't want to, I don't want to see my bobby pin. So what I need to do is come in deep into the original pony underneath there, push in and just latch across this way. Oops, have I got one hair that's not sitting properly, you little sucker. So what happens here now, Sharon? I know that when dressing hair, things don't always happen perfectly. So I know. what advice Sometimes do you have? Sometimes you just swear. Because you can't like start pulling it apart. I know, you can just be, yeah. I've just got a couple of hairs that just got caught in the, the pin, but I think I can manage to get them down okay. There you yeah. go. That's you have to use enough. your hula hands, right? Yeah. Very delicate, light just pressure. Just very light touch. Yeah. So another thing about combing these sort of pieces of hair is, I'm always going to work with that tail comb. That tail comb is like key to me. And to connect some of the pieces, I will use the back end of the, like the tail comb and just dig in and try to get all that distribution looking perfect all the way through. Because you know, when you're doing something clean like this, it needs to be clean. All right, so I thought, this had a little bit of an ode to Dolce and Gabbana, didn't it? And I thought, hmm. I didn't think that was such a bad idea because I think he had a couple of headbands going on. And the, oh, other than that, it would have been a lot of flowers. So I didn't have the flowers, so we'll, we'll opt for this today. 
Where do you find tend to find these accessories? Are you always looking? I am super lucky because this lady, her name is Stephanie Brown, and uh, she lives in Australia, and she is a designer, and she does all these individual pieces. So when I need something, I just sort of do do my sketches. And then I go to her with my sketches and say, can you make something to work with this? So I get the biggest bag of goodies where every year, at the beginning of every year, and I travel the world with them and then I just give them back to her at the end. So, you know, it makes life very, very easy. Um, and they all sort of, you know, I just carry what I need to carry and they just get trotted out wherever the occasion needed and that just happened to be appropriate for today. So we've had a lot of love for Pivot Point, a lot of hairdressers that have been working for a long time saying how much Pivot Point has meant to them. Now, Sharon, uh, besides using Pivot Point mannequins and tripods, you've actually represented the company, oh, done collections and education. Can you believe education. that I have been so honored to be the probably one of the very first outside the company ever invited to Pivot Point to do their uh, resources. Yeah, I remember. So that was maybe four years ago. Photo and video collections. Yeah, I did the whole thing for them. And I can't tell you how I was just like so damn excited that they even considered me to go in and do something so significant. And to be working with an outside brand, you know, I thought that was just wonderful. So we had a most beautiful collaboration with them which I'm so honored and, you know, thrilled about. And that's okay. opened some amazing doors as well, you know, various companies around, you know, various so pivot point people around the world. One of the other things, for those of you watching at home, Sharon's been doing hair for 55 years and she's still one of the most ambitious people I know. She's accomplished so much, she's an icon in the Australian Hall of Fame, won over 500 uh, awards. This woman never says no to an opportunity to share her craft yeah. and spread, you know, so it's that ambition, that drive I to just share. Want to, I just want to know when they throw me in that box and put a couple of flowers on the top of me that I've left a legacy of at least challenging people to continue to believe in the craft yeah. and to always, you know, never lose sight of what's possible. And every year, um, you know, I, I always enter competitions because I, I've got to keep driving myself as well. You know, you have to constantly push yourself to be the best you can possibly be. And near enough or I won an award 10 years ago is not good enough for me. Yeah. You know, last year is too, too, too long ago for me. So that's sort of how I think it, it should be when you are at this level of hairdressing. I think it's really important. Amazing. Now that bit so, of hair yeah, that's that, Again, over, she just did it again. She does the little whoop, 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 and all of a sudden something, so, so explain so see it. see what but. I've just done there. So look, it's six hairs from the front. It's quite short. It's not going to tuck in anywhere. So I just thought, just to be a little bit clever, we might just do like a little bit of a lift on that top piece. So I'm going to take my spray and with my fingertips just pinch up and follow the movement. So it's a beautiful S-shaped formation that I've got there. But I thought I might just follow that movement. So I'll move my fingers down just a little lower again. Just pinch it up. I don't know the last time I've done anything quite so classic and polished. It's quite nice. <laughs> Because I sort of have been doing all messy work for ages because that's what everybody's doing. But it's just nice to be able to just go back. It's probably like you, the Sassoon folks here, to go back and do a classic bob. It's probably, you know, a, a similar, similar experience to the appreciation of doing the perfect classic bob. And I say to people, if you want to compare this type of work to any other dressed hair, this is the Sassoon Classic Bob, that clean, beautiful shape, um, you know, beautiful movement, everything perfected. That's what I believe the equivalent is in cutting to what I'm actually doing today. So I'll lift up a little bit more. But just a few little, it's just very lightly lifting and then just running your fingers along the ridge of it just to elevate it beyond the shape that's sitting below. Lots of love coming in. I can't hardly keep up with all your fans all over the world oh and God, everyone. It's just so lots of people who, who have trained with you in the past. And I've seen the word elegant come out about a hundred times here. I don't know if we've seen that. You know, I yet. don't know if we, I want to use elegant. I think I know, sometimes it's not got an old age stamp to it. I don't think so. I think it's still is a beautiful that okay? Word. Is it okay oh to God. use that? I, I do. 
I think so. Although, who knows? I'm kind of getting old now. Oh, I'm so, so maybe, glad I've got a Maybe we need to ask the kids. <laughs> The millennials. What's the word, guys? What's our dope. what's our students say? Yeah, the it's dope. Someone lit. said it's lit. There we go. What is it? There's it's a, lit. <laughs> it's lit. Yeah, she's definitely How do you spell that? L I T, like lit, like I lit. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> cigarette. Oh okay. It's lit. Someone, Let me hear you say, it, Sharon. Someone said something to me, dope, and I thought, oh, are they calling me a dope? No. <laughs> let's hear. Let's hear. <laughs> Sharon, that's lit. All right. Okay. So, what about a few questions on this? Oh, our good friend Leon Gorman is tuning in. Oh, wow. Great to see you here. Uh, right now, lots of people want to know what kind of spray you're using. Okay, this is still only three, le three factor three. So this is from Goldwell, the perfect yeah. hold, yeah. factor three. Yeah. And that's pretty much all you've used. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how much spray have I put on here? Of the diamond gloss spray. So I've used probably more diamond gloss than, um, than anything. Let me say to you, many, many years ago in my life, as a classical competition stylist, the two products were always used simultaneously, an oil shine and a hairspray. And it was usually the L'Oreal um, Elnet, mm, which Elnet, was the yeah. classic styling hairspray, and it's still out there, isn't it? it sure is. But in saying that, um, I find the two of them working simultaneously together is absolutely beautiful to get that finished and polished look. I think, you know, I would like her to be featured on the other side because that piece of hair there is my set mark. And unless I can move it out, I'm going to just, like, kind of, I'll beat myself up over that piece of hair. Put you to the test, Sharon. No, that's better. That's better. Okay. I got that out. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. Great. So I'll do a little 360 here. Try not to eat too much hairspray. What do you think? What's everyone think? I think it's lit. It's beautiful. Bomb.com. Yeah, have I got it balanced? Let me see in the mirror. You want the rulers back? No, it actually needs to lift out a little bit on that side. And that's what I like about my padding shape. You can actually get that comb in and just pull it out, push it in, and really manipulate it. Just, you know, like it's, it is just so nice to manipulate. Now, I personally wouldn't put any more spray in that. I feel what I have in there is enough. I know some people just have to have spray, but it's not my poison. Um, I like just that lighter spray with that little bit of oil. Any other questions there? I really just a lot of love. Everyone's saying Thank beautiful you. for wedding, prom, someone even said for date night. We've had some of the best hairdressers in the world tune in, Michael Polsonelli and Leon Gorman, both masters in their own right, and they're both saying what incredible work and how inspiring you are. And I just have to say, every time I get to be around Sharon Blaine, it reminds me of how, how much I love this craft. And I want to thank Pivot Point for their support in this ongoing series of professionals who practice. And I want to remind you, if Sharon Blaine, who's an acclaimed master and has been doing hair for over 55 years, just said about an hour ago she was in her hotel room at 1 a.m. playing with mannequins, you can understand how important it is to always work on your craft. You and can't afford, you can't, for one, I think if you go a week without doing something, like an hour at least of practice and fiddling with the head, you're already behind the eighth ball. You, that's why I think my longevity has been, that's key to my longevity, is constantly, constantly creating, finding something new, working on some idea, researching, whatever it is. It, and, but it's not an hour for me. It's <laughs> 10 much, hours, 20 hours, hours, 45 hours. At least 10 hours. But you know, that's the role I play and that's what I do to be able to give back to the industry. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you all for watching. I want to remind Thanks, you, guys. if you want to spend more quality time with Sharon Blaine, we have an amazing online education program happening for the next two days. Go to hblive.me and pre-order for only $99. You'll have 10 hours of education, and it's not with an iPhone like what we're doing here. We do this for free to spread the word about great education. It'll be in a full on sound studio with six cameras and you'll get to really see and, and, and experience the magic of this incredible hairdresser, Sharon Blaine. hblive.me and of course, visit Sharon Blaine at Sharon Blaine Education. She still yes. has lots of DVDs so on there. So we have anyone in, um, mm, what's the name of the country that I was going to do? Bon Peru? Yeah, I'm going, bon no, it's not Bonas Aires. Okay. Buenos Aires, no, Peru. I can't even Lima, Lima, Peru. Chile. Chile. Is it Chile we're going Chile. to? Yes. yes, I think I'm going to Chile. Yeah, she's got a, the woman we're who's complaining about jet lag flying to Chile. Well, all right, guys, thank you yeah. so much for hanging out with us. Peace See out. See you there.